Black holes are small but incredibly massive objects scattered throughout the universe. The intense gravity of a black hole warps the fabric of time and space more than any other celestial object we know of. Can the time warping properties of black holes be harnessed? Can we use them to travel through time? Black holes are not time machines. You would fall into a singularity and you'd be crushed and you would die. Some interesting effect that we don't yet understand about what happens at the center of a black hole, there's no reason to think that it pushes you backward in time. A black hole is more or less a one-way street. You go in, and you will never come back out. So black holes won't work. But another cosmic anomaly made famous by science fiction might do the trick. Wormholes. Wormholes are magic doorways connecting two remote locations. These cosmic sky bridges would allow us to jump across space and travel in time. Fly into a wormhole and you can take a shortcut to another place or time. We have no proof that wormholes exist, but there is plenty of solid science behind them. No one knows more about wormholes than renowned physicist Kip Thorne. For starters, he can tell you why they're called wormholes. If you have an apple, a worm drills a hole through the apple, reaches from one side to the other. You can think of the surface of the apple as being like our universe. And the worm has gone through some higher dimension to reach the other side. If they exist, wormholes are smaller than atoms. If we want to go through them, we need to stretch them out and hold them open. Prying open a wormhole would take a tremendous amount of energy. Not just ordinary energy, but something called negative energy. Negative energy is anti-gravitational. It repels the fabric of space and time and would prevent gravity from crushing a wormhole. One problem. A lot of people don't believe negative energy exists. The kind of energy that would anti-gravitate is ridiculous. But in fact, in modern physics, we know examples of negative energy that are created in the laboratory every day. Small amounts of negative energy, often just transient, but nevertheless negative energy. And so I was not willing to dismiss this possibility out of hand. The fundamental question was, could a very advanced civilization accumulate enough at, uh, negative energy and hold it in the interior of the wormhole long enough to keep the wormhole open so that somebody could travel through it? The answer is we don't know. Meanwhile, another renegade physicist worked up a different way to harness the time-warping effects of celestial phenomena. Richard Gott has been studying the problem of time travel for decades. Gott's novel Time Machine uses the heavy gravity surrounding cosmic strings to create loops in time. Cosmic strings are thin strands of energy that may run through the universe. There's a poem. There was a young lady named Bright. She traveled far faster than light. She left one day in a relative way and returned home the previous night. <laughs> the trouble is, Einstein also told you that you can't build a spaceship that goes faster than the speed of light. But in general relativity, which is theory of curved space-time, if you take a shortcut, you can beat a light down. So this is what allows you to circle the cosmic strings and, like Miss Bright, uh, visit an event in your own past. And no one knows if cosmic strings are real. But many physicists think they're out there. Pieces of high-density vacuum energy left over from the Big Bang, narrower than an atomic nucleus. Some strings may be short, some may be infinitely long. 
but they all exert incredible gravity. And where there's incredible gravity, there's a chance of creating a shortcut across time and space. So here's how to build a time machine using cosmic strings. Now, you might think that the geometry around a cosmic string is flat like a piece of pizza, but actually, because they have a large mass per unit length in the string, it really looks like a pizza with a slice missing. So if I cut out a slice of pizza here, and take it away, and then I fold up the pizza, so it's like a cone. It looks like, it looks like, pizza looks like a cone. So if I was over here on planet A, I can send a light beam to planet B. But I could get on a spaceship and I could go slower than the speed of light and travel over here across the shortcut and I can get there ahead of the light beam. And what that means is that my departure and my arrival are separated by more distance in space than distance in time. In other words, this might be four light years in distance and only three years in time. So then what you could do is I can cut out another missing pizza slice here. And now I've got two cosmic strings and then it's folded up like a boat. That's what space time around the two cosmic strings looks like. So then what I can do is if I circle the two cosmic strings with my spaceship, I can arrive back to planet A at noon. Now, planet A at noon is the same time and the same place. So I can come back and shake hands with myself as I departed. So my older self can come back and I can see myself off. This is me visiting an event in my own past. That's real time travel to the past. But once again, there are one or two problems with this. For starters, when you push two cosmic strings together at high speed, it may create a black hole. You may be killed after doing the time travel, or you could be killed before you even complete the time travel. The other thing is that this loop would weigh about maybe uh, uh, half the mass of our galaxy if you wanted to travel back in time a year. And so this is a project that only super civilizations could attempt. It's far beyond what, what we're able to do. Physicists like God don't claim they can build working time machines today. They're trying to figure out whether the laws of physics permit time travel at all. There are several inherent problems in all scenarios for building time machines. And that is that nature appears to have a driving force that may always cause a time machine to self-destruct the moment you try to activate it. The answer as to whether you can get around it is held tightly in the grips, we believe, of the laws of quantum gravity, laws that we don't yet understand. We know how gravity affects large objects like people, our planet, and the stars in the sky. We don't understand how it works deep down at the quantum level, the super small domain of waves and particles. But not understanding something has never stopped people from experimenting. Right now, another group of explorers hunt for answers to the mystery of time travel in perhaps the least likely place, deep inside the heart of the atom.